Welcome to All About the Bay. Every week we bring to you some material that is going to help your business. As a small business owner, uh, this material is extremely important. With me today is Mr. Cameron Barbrick. He is a public speaker, but he also a coach. He's a communications coach, right? All of us, small business owners, maybe one of the reasons why our business is succeeding, it's not doing very well, is because we're not communicating very well. Maybe our marketing material is not good. Maybe our public speaking is not good. Maybe our market, uh, our materials are clear enough. What's our slogan? What, what, what's the content? It's not slow enough, it's not articulate. So today, Mr. Cameron is gonna share with you how to make your message pretty succinct so that you don't have to struggle anymore. But say you're not a small business owner, this applies to you even in your household or you as a politician watching this. This applies to you. If you're with your president of the country, I don't know, president of a small business or a big business, you got to listen to this because this young man is going to share with us some amazing materials. And by the way, don't forget to subscribe because every week we commit to bringing to you people like Mr. Cameron Barbrek. I'm your host, Paula Joy. Welcome to the show, Mr. Bobrick. It's wonderful to be here, Paul. Thank you for inviting me on board. Wow, okay, cool, man. You're looking nice, dapper here. Is this from San Francisco? This is actually from Rome, Italy. Oh, Rome, oh, yeah, wow. So I was in Rome in 2019. Yes. I was with my dad, my brother, my whole family. Yes. We rode motorcycles across the entire country. Yes. We stopped in Rome. This is one of the highlights of 2019 for mm. me. My father and I mm -hmm. we went to a suit store in Rome. Right. We picked out suits. We yes. got measured. We yes. walked away looking dapper. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had this thing. Uh, oh, was it, really made? was it already made or basically... They, they, they made it for you there? It was made and it was fitted. Wow, that's amazing. I know that in Italy they have some really nice shoes too. These are Italian shoes? No, oh, these are Ross shoes. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> but you know, it's, you know, it's funny is, is every time I have a very similar pair of shoes yes, as well. Right, very, right. very similar. I spent right. way too much money on yes, them. They're right. Calvin Klein brand yes, shoes. Right, right. Nobody ever compliments me on my Calvin Klein shoes. They always compliment me on my Ross. Oh, this is like Calvin Klein. Hey, well, okay. hey, you, I'll, be, I'll be the first to give you that. Let me very, just polish very, up a little bit. Very polished. Okay. Cool, man. So, public speaker, how did you start? Sure. So, so I'll just go all the way back. Mm -hmm. right? So, I'm a communication expert. I'm a communication coach. Yes. Now, it started when I was six years old. Mm. And it started in my household. Okay, so when I was six years old, I woke up in the middle of the night to yelling, fighting, mm -hmm. banging, and there I am, I'm six. I wake up, for whatever reason, I conjure the idea to climb out of bed, walk through the dark living room and into the kitchen mm -hmm. where my big tall parents stood. There they were arguing, mm -hmm. yelling over each other. Mm -hmm. And at the top of my lungs, I yelled, stop mm -hmm. fighting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And guess what? They did. Mm -hmm. What a thing. Right. Two grown adults right. who couldn't give each other the time of day to listen to one another mm. listened to a six-year-old. Mm. Right there in that moment, I discovered two things. First was very interested in communication. Mm -hmm. And then the second was, well, communication is complicated. Mm -hmm. And it's complicated because it's nuanced. Mm -hmm. It's complex. It's fascinating. Mm -hmm. Like... You know, nonverbal communication makes up for a great deal of how we interpret the meaning and emotion behind somebody's message. You know that the content of our words mm -hmm. only make up for about 7% of the meaning that we place on people's communication, mm -hmm. according to some empirical studies. Mm -hmm. A lot of the others made up of nonverbal. Mm -hmm. Storytelling stimulates unique parts of the brain that no other style of communication stimulates. Mm -hmm. Pictures, signs, Verbal or nonverbal cues can mean different things in different cultures and different contexts. Mm -hmm. So communication is a very fascinating and complex subject. Mm -hmm. What I do is I work with people on being masterful communicators in their own lives, mm -hmm. whether mm -hmm. that's public speaking, mm -hmm. presenting, or just communicating in their household mm -hmm. or in their business, with their business partners, with their spouse, 
and with their kids. Mm. That's interesting. Okay, so let's talk about, you said that three aspects, right? Basically, public speaking, one of them, right? And then you have presentation, and then you have communication, right? Those mm -hmm. three aspects. Let's talk about public speaking. Someone sure. did say that, okay, people, the, people are scared of two things the most, right? One is death. I don't know why they should be scared of death <laughs> because they're given. <laughs> and the second one is public speaking. So let's talk about that. Why public speaking? I mean, why is it? Why should they be scared of it? The, the, yeah. people, the people are looking at have two eyes and one nose just like them. Why should they be scared of that? Well, it's a good question. And, and my belief is because for people, public speaking gives them certain fears that we might otherwise have in survival situations. So when we get in front of an audience and we start speaking, what happens? Oftentimes we get really quiet. Mm -hmm. We get really stifled. We close ourselves up. We make ourselves small. Mm -hmm. We get weird and we start rocking back and forth. We divert eye contact mm -hmm. from our audience. We start looking elsewhere in the back wall. And if you think about it, this makes sense in that sort of evolutionary standpoint. Because if you're out in the wilderness mm. and there's a saber-toothed tiger that's getting ready to pounce on you, mm. what are you gonna do? You're gonna protect yourself. Mm -hmm. You're gonna make yourself small and you're gonna make yourself quiet. Mm -hmm. So I think public speaking is, is terrifying for people because for whatever reason they feel threatened. Mm -hmm. It's a perceived threat, but mm -hmm. you get in front of an audience, you're not actually threatened. You're just in front of an audience speaking. Mm -hmm. So it's important to understand that when you start speaking, no matter where you're at, if you have terrible public speaking anxiety, the first thing you need to recognize for yourself is I'm not actually in danger right now. Even mm -hmm. if it occurs for me that way, mm -hmm. I'm not actually in danger right now. Yeah. That's interesting. So, so what do you recommend? That's one thing, right? You recognize that you are not actually in danger. But what's another thing that you tell people to do when they, they have the opportunity to speak in public? I would have thought, for example, they could bring family members along or they, they should be prepared, first of all. They should be very prepared of the subject that, and also they should be subject matter experts of whatever they're going to speak about. Wouldn't, wouldn't you say, I mean, Absolutely. give me five, five, five things that could make them uh, 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 derail that fear. So the first thing when I work with individuals, I say you need to own your inner state. Okay, so that's owning what you've got going on for yourself internally. Now, oftentimes when people speak in front of an audience, they feel really nervous. Like we mentioned earlier, they feel very threatened. So it's just recognizing, okay, I'm, I'm scared right now. I feel like I'm in danger. That's all right. And you want to assess what's going on in your body. How are you sitting? How are you standing? Are you closed off? Are you making yourself small? Are you pulling yourself away from the audience? You wanna just recognize that. And if that's the case, you should open yourself up. Because that's the first thing. Mm -hmm. Own your inner state, checking in with your body. What's your body saying? Not just to your audience, but more importantly, what's your body communicating to yourself? Mm -hmm. You know, physiologically, our bodies and minds are constantly talking. Mm -hmm. So if I'm here and I'm closed off, and I'm making myself small, and I'm moving away from my audience, what am I communicating to my subconscious? Mm -hmm. well, what I'm saying is danger. Mm -hmm. Get me out of here. Mm -hmm. It's a fight or flight response. Mm -hmm. So what you wanna do in that situation is you wanna open yourself up and you wanna lean in. You wanna move forward because that's actually gonna communicate, your body's gonna communicate to your mind, no, I'm actually safe right now. Mm -hmm. It's all good. There's no saber-toothed tiger in the mm -hmm. bushes getting ready to pounce on me. Mm -hmm. And you'll have a natural physiological response. You'll start to feel calmer. You'll start mm -hmm. to feel less stressed out yeah. and more relaxed. So that's the first thing. The second thing is you wanna check in on your breathing. Mm -hmm. How are you breathing? So when people start to feel very nervous and threatened in front of an audience, our breathing gets really weird too. We start breathing in very shallow breaths mm -hmm. from our chest, mm -hmm. lack of oxygen to the brain. Again, that's something we do when we feel threatened. Mm -hmm. We start breathing all funny. So you want to check in on how you're breathing and you want to get some nice, deep, oxygen-rich breaths into your lungs. Mm -hmm. Let's just take a moment to just get some solid breaths in there mm -hmm. and then move forward. Mm -hmm. So those are the first two things. Check in with your body, check in with your breath. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next thing is what do you do when you hit a wall, right? So you're speaking and you forget what you're gonna say. Mm -hmm. Well, in that situation, most people, they just freeze up. Mm -hmm. 
okay? And then they panic, panic mode. Mm -hmm. They start freaking out. They start getting weird. They start rocking back and forth. They start getting sweaty. Right. right? Their cheeks start shaking. Mm -hmm. So what do you do in that situation? Well, again, you just take a moment to breathe. You take a moment to relax. You calm yourself down real quick, and then you move forward. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the second thing is when you hit a wall, you want to just incorporate those first two lessons, mm -hmm. breathing and checking in with your body. Another thing is come prepared. And when I say come prepared, I don't just mean have a, a presentation that's very well rehearsed mm -hmm. and scripted. I mean, know your material and share it in a conversational style. Mm -hmm. So I call this being organic, yet being organized. Mm -hmm. Okay, so being organic mm -hmm. and being organized, mm -hmm. right? So have a structure, have a system. One thing that I teach people is I teach them a framework to build their presentations and then you memorize that framework in little bite-sized pieces. Mm -hmm. Understand the intention of the conversation of what you're trying to get across. Mm -hmm. And then just communicate that intention. Yes. Okay, so that's the next thing. Another thing that you could work on is your storytelling skills. Mm -hmm. So being able to be a good storyteller. Right now, a lot of people don't realize this, but storytelling is one of the most efficient ways to get your message across. Mm -hmm. Why? Because stories relate to people. Right. You know, people can put themselves into a story. People can put themselves, they can see themselves in a scenario. It creates visuals in their mind and that engages them, mm -hmm. that entertains them. Okay, let's stop there. You told me a story of where this all came about. Like, yeah. like an epiphany, like Bob, when you used to be a salesperson and this family walked in and then typically you would just rant on the that product or something but that day you saw a little kid walk in and, and with the parents and and we went and basically talked to the dad t t tell me about that yeah so this was early on in my sales career and i wasn't a very good salesperson <laughs> so what would happen is people would often come in and they'd come to my department and i'd run up to them and i'd start rattling off information features and facts that you could read off of a brochure right right and oftentimes, people would have a very similar and predictable reaction. Mm -hmm. They'd get bored, and then they'd walk away. Yeah. And then I would leave disappointed. I'm so bad at my job. Mm -hmm. One day, a family of four walks in. It's a mom and a dad and a brother and a sister. And they go to my department section. They go over, they go over there. Yes. I see them. I run up to them. I start rattling off all this information. Same thing. The gentleman I'm speaking to, you could see in his eyes, yes. he's losing interest. Mm -hmm. I'm starting to get reactive to it. Mm -hmm. And then right there in that moment, I see the kids in the background, they're climbing on one of the products, like mm -hmm. a jungle gym. Mm -hmm. And I start laughing. And the man, he's like, what are you laughing at? Mm -hmm. I say, I'm laughing at your kids. He says, why? So because they remind me of myself and mm -hmm. my brother when right. we were growing up. Right. So what do you mean? I say, well, when I was their age, my dad, my mom, they would take us out to the lake. We would take one of these machines. It was an off-road vehicle. It was a power sports store. Mm -hmm. So they would take one of these, these machines out to the lake. First thing we would do when we got there is my brother and I would climb on it like a jungle mm -hmm. gym and we'd jump into the mud. Mm -hmm. And our parents would yell at us. <laughs> but it was some of the fondest memories I had growing mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling this man this story and he starts laughing. He says, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the exact thing that I want. Those mm -hmm. are the memories I want to make. I just moved from the city yes. out here into the mountains, and these are the experiences I want to have with my family. Mm -hmm. Sign me up. Mm -hmm. I say, okay, it was the first major sale that I made that mm -hmm. day. Right. But what I learned from that was people don't relate to facts and features, mm -hmm. data, numbers, and statistics. People relate to stories mm -hmm. that are relatable and relevant to them. Yes. At that point, storytelling became a staple into my salesmanship. That's amazing. That's mm -hmm. amazing. That's... From that moment on, and you, 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 your life changed. Did it, is that why you went into public speaking? That was when I got an interest in public speaking, but it wasn't the day that I decided I want to be a communication coach and mm -hmm. really work with people on their speaking skills. Right. That happened when I was a, a coach for another personal development professional growth program. Mm -hmm. And there was a woman, a participant of that program, but otherwise was a very confident and charismatic individual. Mm -hmm. But the moment she got up in front of a room, mm -hmm. she would shut down and fold like a house of cards. Mm -hmm. 
And I was always like, what? Like, how is this person so confident in a one-to-one -one situation or just speaking to a, a small group, but you put her in front of an audience mm. and she, she melts. Right. And I decided right there, public speaking is something that I've worked on for myself. It's mm -hmm. a gift that I have and now I want to give it away. I want to give it away because I want people to be able to communicate their message in an effective way. I think mm -hmm. everybody's got a message mm -hmm. and everybody wants to be heard. Mm -hmm. But how often do we really have the experience of getting our communication across fully? Mm -hmm. So that was really the moment I decided for myself, I want to be a communication expert. I want to be a communication coach. Right. That's, that's interesting. So you talked about uh, the positioning yourself. You talked about being articulate. You talked about telling a story. I want to ask you about the story part. What if you have 20 minutes to talk? You know, um, can you fit your story into 20 minutes? Absolutely. Right? Yeah. So do you mean if you have 20 minutes as a whole to, to, to yeah. talk? Yes, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. You just want to make sure that your story is relevant to your content and your right. presentation. Right. So earlier we were talking and I said, you want your presentation to be succinct mm -hmm. and be clear and connect. Yes. That means you have point A, point B. Mm -hmm. You want it all to tie into mm -hmm. each other. Mm -hmm. And it really works if every now and then you inject a story mm -hmm. into your presentation mm -hmm. that's relevant to mm -hmm. your content. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So maybe you're talking, you're sharing something, you make a statement, and then you're backing your statement up with facts, reasons. And then maybe you just share a quick story or a quick scenario that helps to further support what you're saying. Mm -hmm. So you can absolutely tell a story. Now, what people struggle with is how do I make my story relevant? Mm -hmm. Well, you can do that by what I call using frameworks, yeah. right? storytelling frameworks. Mm -hmm. So that means having a structure in which you're telling a story. One is a personal story framework. I like to uh, use a lot of personal stories. I just mm -hmm. shared a couple a moment ago. Mm -hmm. A personal story framework that you could use immediately is you start in the past, something that happened, like family walks in and they run up to the, they go up to the power sports section, mm -hmm. and run up to them and all of a sudden the gentleman's losing his attention. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you share the event. Right there in that moment, I see the kids, I start laughing. Mm -hmm. He says, why are you laughing? Right. And then you share the discovery. I made my first sale that day. Share the discovery. Mm -hmm. That was the epiphany moment, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, I realized from this that people are, People can relate to stories mm -hmm. more than they can relate to facts and mm -hmm. numbers and statistics. Mm -hmm. And from that, and you, and you sh how it is now. Right. And from that point forward, I started using storytelling as a staple of my sales techniques. That's cool. So let's still concentrate on public speaking. I see you smiling all the time. Is that deliberate? That is deliberate. So I think nonverbal communication is one of the most important areas of public speaking to go to work on. Mm -hmm. Now, when I work with individuals, I tell them, look, give me 28 days, no matter where you're at in your public speaking skills right now, I'll turn you into a more confident and charismatic speaker. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I do that by working on the four fundamental areas mm -hmm. of public speaking. Mm -hmm. The first is delivery. Okay, so delivery is the way you sound, mm -hmm. the way you look, the way you feel. Mm -hmm. We already talked about how you feel. It's owning your inner state. Mm -hmm. And then you want to work on how you sound and how you look. Yeah. So that's your nonverbal communication a lot of the time. That's your vocal tonality. Mm -hmm. It's your eye contact. It's your body language. So yeah, it's really important. You want to smile. You want to make strong eye contact. You want to speak in a downward tone. Rather than, this is one issue that I see with people oftentimes, is they speak and their voice rises at the end of the sentence. Mm -hmm. What does that communicate? Well, it communicates some uncertainty. Mm -hmm. So instead, you want to have a downward intonation. Right. That communicates certainty. It not only has an effect on the way that your audience hears your message, but for yourself, again, it makes you feel certain of what you're saying. Mm. That's interesting. Okay, so, so Cameron, you talked a lot about uh, public speaking, but a lot of our audience, a lot of our members are not candidates for that, right? They don't speak in public or large audiences. Uh, they're basically small business owners. So we'll talk about people like realtors, CPAs, and you know, and people that okay, be consultants. I'm talking about consultants. So how does your message uh, uh, re uh, um, relate to them? How does your message, you know, right. your coaching relate to people like that? Sure. So I like to think that public speaking and one-to-one -one speaking is the same thing. Mm -hmm. You're working on the same skills. Mm -hmm. 
But when I'm working with individuals one-on-one and they want to improve their communication skills as a whole, Mm -hmm. then I work with them on a variety of things. But the main thing I work with people on is being more responsible communicators in their own lives. Mm -hmm. So what what do I mean by more responsible communicators? I mean being an individual that fully takes ownership over the way in which you listen to other people and the way other people listen to you. Mm -hmm. So that means you're taking responsibility for the fact that everybody has a unique point of view, everybody has filters that distort the way in which we listen to people and interpret other people's messages. Mm -hmm. It's recognizing, understanding, and honoring that. Mm -hmm. And then it's listening to them with an open heart and an open mind. And then responding to that, So I'll give Mm -hmm. you an example of what I I see often with the individuals that I work with, Mm -hmm. and I call this irresponsible listening. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been listening to somebody, and while they're speaking, you're in your head thinking of what to say next, Mm -hmm. thinking Mm -hmm. of a response? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're not actually listening to them. You're listening to yourself, talking to yourself, Mm -hmm. and then responding to that. Wow. So really, when when you're working on your communication skills, it starts with your listening skills. Mm -hmm. You want to listen to some somebody fully and really be a a committed listener such that you can fully understand what they're communicating, respond to them there, meet them where they're at. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing that you can do to be a better communicator now is go to work on your listening skills. Another thing is, again, go to work on your nonverbal communication Mm -hmm. skills. Mm -hmm. So this is things like eye contact. Do you make strong eye contact? Mm -hmm. Do you speak with a powerful vocal tonality? Do you have Mm -hmm. variety in your vocal tonality, in your pitch, Mm -hmm. in the rises and falls of your intonation, in your prosody, Mm -hmm. in your pacing? Do you talk really, really fast and people can't really understand you? Or do you slow down and Mm -hmm. talk in a way in which people can fully hear you? Mm -hmm. So let's say you're a realtor, right? And you're going to do a listing presentation. I mean, do you come across realtors? Some of... Do you have realtors as clients? Or? I've worked with realtors in the past as well. Mm-hmm. And, and so when we go to work on their communication skills, usually, again, I just like to start with, okay, are you really listening to these individuals? Mm-hmm. I say, okay, uh, no, I get really in my head when they're talking. Mm-hmm. All right, no problem. So what I'll tell them is here's one technique to stay present. It's called outward focus. Mm-hmm. Outward focus is a stage acting technique. It's what theater actors use to stay present with their partner when they're doing a scene. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's when you catch yourself focusing your attention on yourself, because when your attention is on yourself, where's Mm -hmm. your attention not? Mm -hmm. The other person. It's not on the other Mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm. So you want to build a muscle for catching yourself when you're in your head Mm -hmm. and pulling yourself out of your head so you're back in the present moment. Mm -hmm. How you can do that is just focusing your attention on some objective thing in front of you, Mm -hmm. right? Maybe I'm I'm, I'm listening to you, Mm -hmm. I'm speaking, All of a sudden, I'm in my my head thinking about what I ate for lunch and Mm -hmm. if I have salad in my teeth. Mm -hmm. I notice that, and then I'm going to put my attention maybe on your tie for just a second. Mm -hmm. So I'm back out here. I'm paying attention to you again. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing you want to work on Mm -hmm. is staying present. Mm -hmm. Another thing that you want to work on is maybe your storytelling skills. So are you... Are you just talking in generic ways, in ways that aren't relevant or relatable? Or do you share stories? Are you animated? Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's, that's another thing you can work on as a speaker. Mm-hmm. You can work on being more, uh, more open with your body language and utilizing your hands, your gesturing more. Mm-hmm. I hear people all the time say, when I'm talking, what do I do with my hands? Mm-hmm. Well, I say the two things. One, you want to keep them just at a home-based position. Mm-hmm. So if you're sitting down, you might just keep them in your lap. Mm-hmm. Or if you're standing, you might just keep them by your side. Mm-hmm. Or a little bit more advanced, you do what I call illustrating. And that's actually using your hands to create visuals. So when you're telling stories, maybe I'm talking about the, the delicious piece of pizza that mm-hmm. I had yesterday. Mm-hmm. You know, I might actually be saying, yeah, I grabbed this. I took that. It was a big pizza pie. I grabbed a slice. And I grabbed that thing. And I took a big old bite out of it. Yes. Then so I'm using my hands to create a scene. It's kind of like charades, Mm -hmm. right? It's like I'm acting it out. I'm being animated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's three things right there. One, right? You want to work on your Mm nonverbal communication, your eye contact, your vocal tonality, speaking in that nice downward intonation. You want to work on your storytelling skills. Mm -hmm. So being able to share things that are relatable to the person you're speaking to. You want to work on... Well, you know, your, your hand gesturing. Mm-hmm. You do it with your hands when you're speaking. Being more animated and alive in because people find that engaging and entertaining. Mm. 
Okay, let's talk on a broader scale right now. So what America is facing, and I think a lot of the advanced world is we have this endemic or this terrible problem in society, which is divorce. And you have some of that experience yourself, mm -hmm. right? And, and we know that divorce happens because there's lack of communication or communication is not deliberate, is not, uh, maybe people are not listening to one another or people are not articulate, they are not succinct enough in their messaging to other people. And that's why there's a breakdown. So since you have that, that kind of experience yourself, what would you say is the solution to this problem? Because we don't want society yeah. to break up with a lot of divorce going on and stuff like that. And you, you have a passion to, to yeah. have some change in that arena, right? Yeah, right. So, so I would say you want to be a more responsible communicator. Again, bringing it back to the responsible communication thing. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing that I, I saw growing up a lot when when my parents were fighting is i would see them arguing i would see them speaking over one another interrupting saying things that are triggering you know you've ever been in you've ever been in an argument and you say something and right before you say it it's like you know you know it's going to be triggering to them <laughs> but it's not going to it's not going to resolve the conversation <laughs> or the argument in any way but what do you do you say it anyway mm -hmm. and then they get triggered and then yes. they snap back and yes. all of a sudden you're like it's like a game of pong right, right? right you know when right. you got two paddles and you got a ball. I think of the game Pong, right? But the ball is the message, the mm -hmm. paddle are the two people. Mm -hmm. The ball is bouncing between the paddles back and forth, but mm -hmm. the message isn't actually getting through. Right. You wanna actually just really fully listen to what somebody is saying and avoid saying things that you know is gonna hurt them. This is nonviolent communication. Mm -hmm. Okay, so nonviolent communication is a part of being a responsible communicator. It's speaking with empathy, it's speaking with compassion, it's being honest integrous and authentic in your communication. So I'd say for, for, for families, if there's tension in the household and you know, the communication isn't so great, well, you really want to start with committing yourself to really listening to your partner fully, honoring where they're coming from and having a commitment to respect that. And then responding to that, not responding to what you're telling yourself about what they said, but mm -hmm. responding to what they said. Right. Well, in the modern modern era, right now, people communicate a lot through you, through text and emails. Yeah, and they're still fighting. I mean, because I think that's even more more so because you don't really have, and you kind of think like, oh, that person's not in front of you, and you're not confronting confronting them, right? And it's not immediate. So, uh, and it's, you still send that message, and it's gonna hurt them. So, what are you seeing, and what's your advice? Okay, so I think we live in a very unique day and age where the communication it's all around is just really, really bad. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Well, because there's so much of it being exchanged. There's more communication being exchanged now than ever before in human history. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that creates a couple major issues. That creates issues wherein our communication becomes very personalized. It becomes very separated from the public sphere of opinion. And one major reason that that's an issue is because this personalized communication become, becomes siloed mm -hmm. into these sort of echo chambers that eventually it can explode into violent action. Mm. Right? That's a problem because of this massive quantity of exchange of communication. Another issue with this uh, massive exchange of information is what I call uh, social movement and efficacy. Right. So that's where movements have a hard time getting their message across because they need to conform to politics of what will allow them to go viral, mm -hmm. but miss out on the important nuances of their message. Mm. And the major issue of massive exchange of information, text message, social media, is we become very divisive and disconnected mm -hmm. from one another. Mm -hmm. So how do we go to work on that? Right. Well, you work at the ground level, how you as an individual communicate, mm -hmm. how you listen, how you speak. You work on your public speaking skills. You work on your listening skills. You work on your presentation skills. And that's what I work on. Uh, so you people. get a text message. Okay, so yeah, but I want you to address this because it's very important. But right? you get a text message, you got an email, right? Mm -hmm. What's your reaction to that? And you feel like someone's attacking you. What's your reaction? Or if somebody ignores your email, and, and, and you feel like, oh, you feel ignored and belittled. So yeah. How do you resolve that? Because this is right. a big problem in society right now. Well, first off, 
it's important to recognize that what you're making it mean might not necessarily be what it means. So if somebody doesn't right. respond to you immediately, it might not mean that they don't like you. Maybe they're just busy. Mm -hmm. Ideally, in a perfect world, we're, we're very intentional and responsive to our messages. Mm -hmm. Right? But not, not all the time can that happen. Mm -hmm. Okay? So not making it mean something, but just recognizing what's so, which is okay. They said what they said, and it means what it means. And if you need to ask for clarity, ask for clarity. Okay, so let's start with the person who sent out a message, first of all. What are you, what's your advice to them? So, for example, they feel anger or something, right? Uh, what should they do to avoid this animosity with the other party? Well, I would say let's hop on the phone. If you've got an issue with somebody's message, say, hey, I'm unclear on what you said. Can we hop on a quick 15 minute call and just chat about it real quick so mm -hmm. I have some clarity? Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's easy to interpret something falsely. Okay, and that happens a lot with text messages because all it is is a block of text and we're gonna interpret it how we interpret it, but it might not necessarily be how they meant for it. Some people are introverts, introverts, right? And, and, and instead of just speaking to someone, like I said, they don't like confrontation, right? So what they would do is basically send an email. Mm -hmm. Right. What would be your advice to that kind of person who like, OK, I want I want to fight this war with you. So I'm going to send you an email. What should they do to avoid that co conflict? Well, again, I would say work on your communication skills as a whole mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that you can have these conversations in person or over the phone and so that people can fully understand what you mean rather than read an email. It's very easy to send a message and it come across as passive aggressive, mm -hmm. right? So you want to work on your speaking skills. You want to work on your listening skills so that you can have these kinds of confrontational conversations. Conflict and confrontation isn't a bad thing. Mm -hmm. It opens up dialogue. But if you're coming to those conversations in a, in a fight or flight, like I'm, I want to get my point across and I want to belittle you, mm -hmm. then it's probably not going to be very effective. So w work on your communication skills. Good. So is there anything else you'd like to share with our audience today? Uh, sure. I would say, well, one, if, you know, if you're writing a speech and you have a hard time writing a speech, one thing that you want to work on is framework in your presentation. So one thing that I work with people is putting your presentation into a system, into a framework. Mm -hmm. And that way you can, rec you can rehearse it. You can memorize it and you can write speeches in very little time by frameworking it and, and going to work there. Mm -hmm. So if you have trouble writing speeches, then use a system, replicate that system, improve that system, and that'll help a lot. Good. So how do people contact you? Sure. So you can get a hold of me in two ways. One is you can follow me on Instagram at charisma speaking or you can shoot me an email charisma speaking at gmail.com it was a pleasure having you on the show today man and so if you Thanks, watch Paul. this i told you i promise you from the very beginning that you're gonna learn something good so if you have a problem you know with public speaking or presentation or communication we all do we all do you know we talk here we talk about continuous improvement of our processes, right? The one is perfect. And if you're perfect today, <laughs> you tomorrow you're not gonna be perfect, right? So basically, um, and we, we there's this saying, right? So the golden rule, okay, is basically do unto others what you want them to do unto you. The other one says, turn the other cheek, <laughs> right? So, but that's one thing has been there in history, but in modern times, you need people like Mr. Uh, Barbaric here who has shared with us and I did promise you that we're gonna deliver if you like what you heard today and uh, please share what you have <laughs> learned from this show today and by all means if you haven't subscribed yet please subscribe and if you have a comment comment below right and again like I said you have to subscribe because we have people like Mr. Barbaric you want to be the first person to know about this and share it, man. Let's make the world a better place. You know, communication is a big issue in in, in families, and in, in, in the workplace. You know, uh, between bosses and employees, and 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 between em employees and stuff like that. Between states and stuff like that. You know, countries. And, 
But if anyone, everyone will just learn to communicate better, we'll make this world a better place. And guess what? It will solve our problems too. You know, the uh, problems that we have with our, our health, they might be as a result of not communicating very well because hey, you see somebody, you don't, you don't want to talk to that person because guess what? Uh, we have some animosity against that person. You know, let's learn to be great communicators. And by all means, please uh, pick up the phone or send an email out to Mr. Bobrick and you got nothing to lose. Do you, hey, let me ask you a question. Uh, for people that are watching this, do you have anything special to offer them? Like a 30 minute free consultation? Yeah, so one thing that I offer people when we first start working together is uh, one free one hour long coaching session. Mm -hmm. So I think from the start, I told you that my specialty is give me 28 days with you and we'll turn you into a, a confident and charismatic speaker. All right, and we'll do that by focusing on the four fundamental areas of public speaking, delivery, presentation, storytelling, and improv speaking, so speaking up on the spot. Mm -hmm. Now, I like to start by giving people free consultation over the course of one hour or less to assess what your needs are specifically and then to go to work there. Good, one hour free, my goodness, how much is that worth to you? Um, if you? If you feel like you fall short, and we all do, uh, pick up the phone. I think it gave you some information. What's it again? So you can reach me on Instagram at Charisma Speaking or find me uh, on, on my email. You can shoot me an email, Charisma Speaking at gmail.com. Do you have a phone number? Yeah, sure. You can also shoot me a message or give me a call, 530 305-8881. Please do without hesitation and it's free. Hey, if you want to be a better person as a small business owner or as a father, a mother, as a child, as a student, as a business owner, as a, a politician, you got to learn from this. It's free. Don't mind that he's only 28 years old, 26 years old. <laughs> so good. Again, like I said, subscribe to our channel and share this wonderful message. This is your host, Paul LaJoy. Until next time, see you again.